have you seen other long-term complications such as neurological diseases or immunological diseases in patients after several months of uh, having COVID? That's nice, that's nice. Mm -hmm. so I, I, I try to, I try to uh, um, uh, give some uh, insight for you. Um, the, the cases in Hong Kong are mostly mild. And so the uh, long-term security requires a longer term of uh, follow-up. And uh, I can report here that uh, currently Hong Kong is now moving into its third wave of outbreak, which is very much different from the first and the second. The first wave was around the end of January, February, the, the Chinese New Year seasons, uh, where we see uh, imported cases from mainland China. So at that time, the government has uh, imposed uh, uh, border controls uh, in order to uh, trip down the outbreak. And then the second wave, again, is more related to imported cases, uh, particularly from, from, the, from the Western world, uh, UK, uh, US, uh, Canada, and some from Australia. So these people returning are mostly um, uh, uh, in the students and those are working, working, working peoples. So they basically have better health. And our average length of stay would be around uh, 15 days or so. So that is a, a average ranging from uh, a 10 to 20 in that sense. But now we are seeing that it is different. Now we have a really community spread within different districts of, uh, of the cities. And most mostly I still have uh, read about the uh, epidemiologies in other parts of cities, uh, other parts of the world. Mm -hmm. uh, those those people with uh, chronic diseases and also elderly peoples are more easily affected by this disease and their medical condition really changes because uh, they are, yeah. uh, the impact of the of the of the uh, vascular vascular vascularitis due to the virus uh, is is not uh, is uh, it's not well known there so these cases uh, tends to stay longer up to three weeks and even sometimes uh, uh, one and a half months or so. And up to today, among the 3,000 confirmed cases, we have around 22 deaths. So, so this is referring to the Hong Kong situation. I will see that uh, there will be complications not only in Pumbri, but also uh, those uh, renal failure patients. Uh, they do have uh, uh, more uh, intense uh, complications as a result of, uh, of, of their disrupted uh, medical care. I, I don't know how, what, what is the observation from uh, Dr. Hoi right, in uh, mm -hmm. southern China as well? Thank you, uh, Dr. Liu. Um, so in, in the course of looking after the more severe uh, COVID-19 patients, what we found is, uh, Omar raises a very good point actually, that there are uh, occasional um, neurological deficits that are perhaps unexpected and, and not necessarily directly related uh, to the virus itself. There has been this entity of uh, viral uh, related uh, encephalopathy or encephalitis um, with uh, some question mark about whether or not the, uh, the highline thrombosis, the microvascular infarcts uh, we see more commonly in the European uh, uh, outbreaks. Um, have, have really been uh, a, a cause for microvascular injury to the brain. Um, so effectively, small strokes, I think, is something that in, in the back of my mind I would be worried about um, in certain populations. But, but moreover, there's a, occasional um, groups of patients who seem, seem to develop nerve damage. Uh, we've seen it with uh, sort of uh, uh, 11th or 12th nerve palsies. Um, and a lot of this seems to be related to prolonged intubation and I intensive care management, which you would perhaps expect. Um, but uh, aside from that, as, as Dr. Liu has already alluded to, um, the, the chronic uh, failure, the acute kidney injury, uh, diabetic control, and heart failure are, are all things that we, we need to consider in, in managing these patients. I, I do think COVID patients do need to be followed up uh, long term. And, and regularly, uh, we are starting a data series and collection of these patients now as they are discharged from hospital to ensure that they have very good, uh, very open access to um, the healthcare that they need. And I, I would urge outpatient services to be developed along those lines.